Hey everybody and welcome back to UE5 PP Guru. Today uh, we're going to be adding some functionality to doors um, so that our player can kind of traverse through different levels and things like that. Um, I've, I've got two here for a reason. I want to show something off that I want to add the function of into this game. Um, I've created a basic blueprint of all the pieces of the door so that I can kind of just drag them in, for example and they'll just sit where I need them to. Um, but we're gonna concentrate on these two for now. Um, I've also created a missive color just to use for opening and closing doors and things like that. Uh, if you want me to show you how to do that, I can show you that at some point if, if you wanna know that. Uh, but for now, I've just created a basic blueprint actor. Uh, if you go to the viewport, you can see all the basic bits are here ready to go. It's not the most flashiest of doors, but it, it's good enough for now and I can add to it and, and work upon it. Uh, but for now, we're just worried, worried about getting it uh, started and going. So I have added in a box collision because we're going to need that to get this thing working. Um, there are multiple ways you can do opening doors. It doesn't have to be a box collision, but it is the easiest and fastest way to set things, something up. We're going to also need two uh, variables one being uh, door unlocked and the other one being door closed the unlock one needs to be public so don't forget to tick that uh, and the reason being I'll, I'll show you the reason in a moment open up the event graph uh, and the first thing I want to do is I want to be able to change these emiss emissive colors to what I need them to be so compile, drag out each one of these. We'll also need a branch and we're also gonna need our door unlocked variable two. Hook everything up like so. And then from the door panel, get uh, set static, uh, no, sorry, set material. Just a standard one will be fine. We'll need two of those and set the door panel two to the other one. Hook everything up and it should look like this. Bring this up a little bit because we're gonna copy and paste all of this and put it below as well. And then hook the false up to this as well. Set all of the elemental indexes to one. Now, um, this might be different for everybody else, but for me it is one. I will show you what I mean. So compile, go to the, click any of the door panels. And when you come down to your materials, now I have two materials on my door panel. One is the emissive color, and the other one is just the, the rest of that object. So I'm, I need to change the emissive, so I click on the element index, which is one. Then I wanna set the material. So now I want it, to, if it's open, I want it to be the green emissive material. And if it's closed, I want it to be the red emissive material. And we'll see how this works in a moment. Um, now, what we need to do now is test this. Uh, so when we open up our third person map, you can drag any door in now, and just by clicking on it, you can set whether it is locked or unlocked. Now, I want this one to be open, so I'm gonna give it a tick, and when I click play, the colors now should be red and green emissive, depending on how you want it in your game. And now that way now, the players have a way of knowing which doors they can enter and which doors they can't enter. Very important in a game. You don't want to be running through corridors and not knowing where you can and can't go. Now that that's working, we want to kind of get some functionality going. And the next thing we're gonna want is if you click on to the box, scroll down on the right hand side until you get your on component begin 
an end collision and the end there we go give a wee little breathing room pull out of here and get uh, enable input like so and on the other one we want the disable input and then what I'm going to do is get the player controller and hook them that up to both of them uh, and that's all you need to do for the, the the box it's just that when we step in we can press E and then um, it'll have an effect on that door I might change this down the line to something a little bit more complicated especially as we want an interaction system for all the other items it might be easier just to add the door into that but for now we're gonna get um, keyboard input E so just scroll down just put in keyboard and then find the E key uh, and that's easy 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 <coughs> we're gonna need a couple of branches now we're also gonna need to drag in uh, the first of all the uh, is it locked um, so when we press E we want to check if it's locked if it's false Um, we want to um, play sound play 2D sound and that sound is going to be our door error sound that I've, I've done we can test this now easily by going up to our door and pressing E and it might be a little bit quiet but every time we press E we get that eh, eh, kind of sound. Okay, so now we know that that is working, we can come out of there and open our sliding door. The next thing we want to do is check if the door is, sorry, we want to play a sound first, my, my apologies. Play sound 2D. And we want to do the door accept sound and then plug that into the branch compile that again and we'll just quickly check that too there we go so we get that sound when we when it opens and that sound when it's closed absolutely fine uh, I'm gonna put a delay so it has time to play the sound of just probably 0.2 five half a second just allow the sound to open up then we need to now check to see if the door is closed or not um, now uh, ba, 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 ba. I'm gonna set this to true the reason being is because the door will automatically be closed but if it's set to false it's gonna run and try and shut the door again basically so that's why I'm setting that to false presetting that to uh, at least to be set to true yeah the door is closed so if the door is closed we want to then play a sound and then we also want to set or closed to the opposite so we want to set that to false now because it's now open yeah hopefully this makes sense and then we want to hook that up and we want to tick that to say it is now set to true it is closed <laughs> this will make sense I promise it will make sense uh, timeline we need a timeline add in timeline there we go we'll just call this uh, door opening timeline there we go uh, we'll autumn before we go into this. Oh god! Before we go into this, jeez, I'm clicking on everything. Uh, add the false value into the reverse, like so. Uh, we then need to grab our right door and our left door. Set uh, location. Set world location. Also set world location for that too 
and that will affect both doors. Now, in our timeline, we want to create two new tracks. Normally, you would just set one. Uh, I'm going to set two. So, and we want this to be a float track, just to keep things nice and simple. Uh, add a new key. We want that to be zero and zero. Uh, we also want to add another one. I might change the time value, but for now, we'll have two. Um, uh, and then we'll set one to 180. This is going to be our right track, right open slash door. Set up a, oh, there we go. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, set up a second track, another float track, and we'll call this left open slash, up open slash door. It's supposed to be uh, uh, left open slash close, but it, it, it doesn't matter. I'll change it in a minute. It doesn't matter too much. Uh, add another one again, starting at zero and zero. Um, and then set a new one up at two. And we want this to be minus 180 because we want it to get the opposite direction. Click enter. Compile, go, oh, no, we don't want to go there yet. We want to go to our event graph. We want to pull out on our right open door. We want to make, um, make vector. Just give it a little bit more space. Put that into there, because that's for the right door. We want to make another vector, and we want that to go into our other location, like so. Okay, that's kind of how it should sit roughly. So we can. Uh, it's very messy. I apologize. Um, this doesn't have to be so far away as well. <laughs> There we go, that looks uh, a tiny bit better. And you can always just do that so you can see where all your lines are going to. There we go. Uh, now, just as a quick explanation, it's gonna check if the door's unlocked. If it's not unlocked, it's gonna play that sound and it'll do nothing. If it is uh, unlocked, it'll go to this one, play this sound, it'll delay for, for a half a second. It'll then check to see if the door's open or closed. If it's Closed, it'll open, and if it's open, it will close, it will do the reverse, and it'll set both doors to that point. Click play, and we'll just give it a quick test. So first things first, that's closed. This one's open. Oh, interesting, it's not done anything. What have I done wrong? Let's find out. Oh, aha, I, I see what I've done wrong. Connect up your update. Don't forget to connect your update up like I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Compile, let's try it again. Oh, whoa, that was very fast. Oh gosh, what have I done wrong then? Um, I think what I've done is I'm not you I'm you, I'm setting it to world location and not relative location. Set location. Uh, relative location is I think what we needed uh, and where I went wrong. Uh, oh, didn't connect that up. Uh, copy and paste that into here. Don't forget to hook up your all your different bits. Compile. Now let's try it again. There it goes. And if I click it again, it'll shut. Uh, I want to just, one final thing I want to do just before we finish up is just add in the sounds um, to here. Door, I, I quite like door open too, and door uh, closed. Let's click it again. Now, okay. That's a lot faster. Okay. So to combat that, we can do a couple of things. One thing you could do is if you find the sounds you're using, uh, door open two is what I'm using. It is a What's the length? It's 3.7 in length. So you can, in 
fairness, uh, oh god, I'm messing around with it too much. Oh god, um, set that to three point three point seven. Set your value back to one hundred eighty if you if you've messed with it. Compile, and then what will happen is. And that kind of it needs a bit more tweaking I want the to happen first and then for it to open so we might need to just change a few things uh, on the slide a bit more like it starts at zero you could have it start at one for example but 3.7 is the length so you want it to end at 3.7 uh, as for the close where is that that is a duration of 2.3. So we can then on here set this to 2.3. So that's fine. The duration seems to be way off. What the? Let's set it to 0 0.7 just to see what happens. Oh, I see. I'm not affecting both of them, am I? Hmm. Okay. Um, basically, what that means then is I need to use one, uh, the same for both, probably, uh, in order to ensure that that's correct. But basically, if I set this to, um, if I set this to keep that at three point seven, set this to maybe one. like that and do the same with this one set that to one and this one to uh, 3.7 so they're the same and then in the event graph we'll change it both to door open to just to give it a test compile All right so you'll get the same sort of sound effect basically now that was pretty perfect I really like that that needs to change the, the exiting app needs to change a little bit but overall that was pretty bang on <laughs> that was pretty cool that works really really well um, so yeah we've got a functioning door now either way um, that we can travel through there, didn't I? And you can't obviously go through it. So yeah, really, really cool. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, and I will see you in the next tutorial. If you have any ideas of what you want to see next, please let me know. Uh, leave a like and consider subscribing. Thanks. Bye.